Okay, so uh, welcome to my topic. Today I will be talking about Cyprus in action, how to integrate Cyprus in your development cycle. Uh, before we begin, let me ask you a question. How many of you already work with Cyprus? Yeah, so about half of you. So um, don't worry if you have no experience. I will show you quickly how to uh, install Cyprus and uh, then we will uh, continue to more advanced topics. Me, myself, the first time I encountered Cyprus was in ZKB two years ago. So it's actually a perfect setup for me to do this talk. Um, mm. yeah. uh, so before I start, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Magda Sawyer. I'm a senior consultant at Tubit and a full stack uh, software engineer. Uh, I started my career as a Java developer and now I'm doing full stack with focus on Angular. So um, I worked a lot as a consultant and as an in independent contractor in a lot in banking, uh, which is not uncommon in Zurich. So this is quite a complex setup, which made me sort of understand why working uh, with a well set up environment with running tests is as important as the code itself. Um, currently, I am working at Tubit. We are a small company uh, providing uh, web development services. And here we also develop from scratch and maintain many different projects. So for us, what is important is that we keep our stack consistent and we have best practices in place so that we don't have to start uh, from the beginning every time we do something new. This recently gave me an opportunity to work with Cypress to set it up for our projects. And I will share with you uh, what I learned doing this. So first of all, why are we even talking about Cypress? We are Angular developers, so we probably are familiar with Protractor that comes bundled with Angular. When, well, one of the reasons we might consider uh, rethinking this is that Angular team itself has decided that it's time to say goodbye to Protractor. In the recent po uh, blog post, they announced that they are deprecating Protractor and finishing its development, only fixing some uh, security issues. Uh, Protractor was created in 2013 when the landscape of web development was quite different. So there was no easy way of um, handling asynchronous calls, uh, which Protractor does by wrapping up Selenium web, web driver. Um, uh, but uh, currently, uh, and it does use, Selenium does it using control flow, but in the version, uh, the new version of Selenium WebDriver, this itself has been removed. So Protractor, if they wanted to continue their development, they would have to rewrite all their APIs and all the users would have to rewrite all their code anyway. So instead of doing this, uh, what they decide to do is the better way forward is to actually um, offer good support to external, um, external testing tools that emerged in the meantime. One of those tools is Cypress. Uh, so today we will do, look in detail how you can integrate uh, Cypress uh, using Angular. So the goal that we want to achieve today is to take an Angular.NET Core application, configure and run Cypress end-to-end -end tests, and integrate them to Azure, into Azure DevOps pipeline and also configure build coverage from it, for it. Let me just quickly bring my browser here. Uh, so the app that we will use is very simple. It doesn't do much, it's not needed. There's one call to the backend that does weather forecast that is refreshed, giving all the time different values and some uh, login data. You can log in, log out. Not much more is happening. And there, um, we want to have it running inside our Azure pipeline. So we want to um, have our tests and also uh, 
test uh, also code coverage which should be shown yeah. and also uh, code coverage so that's uh, that's our goal and here's how we will get there today first I will start by showing you what is Cypress and why you might be interested in choosing Cypress to work with. I will show you how to install Cypress and work with it locally. We will discuss testing strategies available and then try to integrate it into Azure DevOps uh, using Docker. And then very br briefly I will discuss how you can um, how you can calculate code coverage metric for, metrics for Angular. Uh, and we will finish off by lessons learned and if we have time, maybe some questions or discussion. <clears throat> mm. So what is Cypress? Well, it's a complete end-to-end -end testing framework that allows you to uh, run, write, run, and record tests. It does not use Selenium, as I already said. Um, it does, however, use many well-known open source testing libraries, um, such as Mocha, Chai, and Sinon.js, which makes the syntax uh, familiar to you if you're using already those. Um, it is executed inside the browser directly with your application, which is great because you have access to everything in your application, every object. It also allows you to read and alter network traffic on the fly. So you can um, check what's happening with your requests, but also replace them complete, uh, re replace responses completely. You also have access to your operating system, which allows Cypress to take screenshots and videos when it's running tests. And it does work with any front-end framework. So if you are a React user, you can also profit from uh, integrated Cypress in your workflow. Here are some benefits of using Cypress. Uh, it is much faster than Selenium-based frameworks, and it is also not so flaky. If you have experience with using Selenium, you might remember that it's, uh, your code is scattered with weights, and it doesn't always work. Sometimes it works locally, and it doesn't work on the integration server, and it's very painful then to debug. Um, Cypress is not like this, it's, it's quite stable, um, so the tests are much more repetitive. It is, in my opinion, simple enough to be used not only by experienced developers, but also QAs who focus on testing. The setup is quite straightforward, so it doesn't require in-depth understanding of maybe programming to be able to run tests. Uh, Cypress also offers you real-time reloads of your tests. So if you modify your tests, they will be automatically rerun if you have Cypress UI open. Um, it uh, offers you a, a very nice visual interface where you can examine, um, examine your tests step by step, um, which makes it very easy to debug. Uh, it also also allows you to time travel in your tests, so you can go to previous steps and see a snapshot of what happened before. As I already mentioned, it allows you to stop REST requests, so you don't have to run every request against a running server. You can uh, test more complex uh, use cases using um, predefined responses. And it's very easy to integrate with Angular, which I'm about to show. Next part is uh, how we would work with it locally. Well, first you need to install Cypress, which is uh, very easy. The preferred way, uh, the Angular way, would be to use ng-add add Cypress schematic. Uh, when you use this way of installing Cypress, you have the advantage of uh, having everything conf configured from the start. So this command also uh, updates your Angular JSON file so that you uh, replace Protractor with, um, with Cypress um, and it uh, creates necessary uh, pack, uh, packet JSON script so that you can run, uh, run uh, Cypress with an npm run command. 
the alternative way that is helpful if you are using something else than Angular is just the standard NPM install. And I, uh, so this is the output from the, uh, from the terminal that you would see. I won't install it now, not to waste time. But uh, it will ask you if you want to have uh, ng-e2e command configured. This part would uh, do the Angular JSON configuration, and then it would ask you if you would like to also add a Cypress component testing. Uh, I clicked yes, but uh, you might not need it. Component testing is another type of testing offered by Cy Cypress. It is different from end-to-end -end testing. It is similar in the philosophy to unit test because it allows you to test a component in is isolation. Uh, it is still in beta, but it, uh, it can be also useful from, for some scenarios. Uh, before we continue, I will just do a demo of what we can expect um, right after the... Um, yeah, yeah, I will just... That's my mouse. Uh, so basically, uh, as I said, the... Um, Angular JSON is modified to uh, include Cypress instead of Protractor, and the um, packet JSON is modified with the necessary script. It is worth noting that Cypress is installed with the latest version. Once you uh, execute the ng add command, I would recommend using a, f a fixed version of Cypress because up until now, at least, uh, the releases have been quite regular, and they often change a lot at once. And you don't really want to keep track of this if if you are uh, integrated it, integrated thing it in your project. The other files added are just uh, Cypress configuration files. The most important, maybe. Uh, so it's uh, Cypress.config.ts. Here you can uh, configure the base URL of your application. Here is the configuration related to component testing. And there is a lot of other stuff coming in once you get to um, configuring maybe uh, more complex tests. Um, but this is what you get out of the box. And then uh, e2e.ts, it contains imp uh, additional imports that you might have, for example, the the commands uh, in commands.ts, this is the placeholder when you can implement your custom Cypress commands. For example, uh, if you uh, want to be testing application login, you might create a custom command to log into your application that would be executed at the beginning of tests. Um, that's the most important part when it comes to the, to the configuration. I will. Now open the UI with uh, npm run Cypress open. Just to uh, demonstrate to you, those of you who haven't used Cypress how it looks like and what it, how uh, you benefit from it when you are um, when you are working with your tests locally. I hope it won't take too much time. Out of the box, uh, Cypress uh, already creates one, uh, one spec that doesn't do much. It just visits your, um, it just visits your uh, website and checks if, the, if it contains the text app is running. It's still too small. Uh, I don't know if it's starting it or is it hanging. Yeah, I hope it starts it soon. Um, when you are, um, so this, uh, maybe I started it then. No, 
और छाया नहीं है तो क्या That's the worst part about doing demos is that it, everything is too slow and you cannot really continue speaking before it shows anything. Um, but as I said, uh, the, uh, the UI is quite, oh, it's, there. it's coming, just not on the screen, but it should. Mm. Why am I clicking? Yeah. Where is it going? It's coming back to that. Yeah. So uh, Cypress recognizes that we have end-to-end -end testing and component testing configured, which means I can go here. It will initialize my configuration. And it will look for existing, um, existing specs that you could be running. First, um, it offers you the browsers that you have installed to test against. Electron is the browser it comes bundled with, which is the default. And again, let's move this here. Yeah. yeah. So here it's the spec. So we can see uh, that the spec is failing. It's failing because it's the uh, default test. It doesn't contain a text, app is running, but it does contain text, welcome to your day app. So if I just update the, the test, it already runs uh, everything. So, um, as you can see, it offers those live reloads that I mentioned. Um, and I just will show you, if I now delete this spec, Cypress recognizes, okay, there are no tests. You can create an empty spec, but what I just quickly want to show you is that it does offer you the option to offer a sample uh, collection of tests that demonstrate different features of Cypress. So um, this, uh, this way, if you are new to Cypress, you can learn something without need to write, te write any code yourself. This is pretty useful for the, um, for the be beginners, I would say. And as I said, it demonstrates those features separately, so you can just uh, look what interests you and see what they write. So if I just... Go, for example, to to one of those. Uh, I don't see anything myself. Uh, there is the to do test, the easiest one. If I just modify the test to be failing. You can see that already that this step is highlighted here, and I see straight away that okay, the list contains two elements. I have here one, so um, so you, you, debugging is very easy. Another thing that Cypress also makes easy is just uh, using selectors uh, to go, to look at your application and see what's the best um, best way to um, pick an element. You can then directly copy this selector and use it in your tests. I think it's really helpful. And uh, by default in this uh, C Cypress open mode, it doesn't create videos uh, or screenshots, but um, when you run it from the command line, it would create screenshots on every failed uh, test, and also you would have video available. Um, so that's pretty much the basics of um, of how you start with Cypress. Uh, and we can continue further to testing strategies. So um, getting a bit of an, a broader view, how we can test with Cypress. Like, well, 
you have two options. One is to use real server responses, which is kind of the default way you might think about it. Firstly, it's a real integration test, uh, a real end-to-end -end test. It tests everything as it is. Uh, it is more likely to work in production. Uh, it allows you to, um, to test server endpoints because you get real data uh, from the server and also works with server-side HTML rendering. But it doesn't come without any drawbacks. It does require seeding of your data, so everything needs to be as you need it. And it is much slower because of the real request. It is also much harder to test edge cases. So sometimes maybe some particular scenario has very difficult setup and it's not as relevant, maybe you don't want to do it. It, it is more difficult when you want to use real server responses. The alternative to this is to stub your responses. This gives you a full control of what you get. So uh, you have full control of the body of the request as well as status and headers. Uh, this way you can also simulate network delays or failures and uh, you don't need to change any, uh, any co code on the server client side. Um, the cons is naturally you have no idea if those responses that you expect match the data from the server and uh, the, the server endpoints are not already covered by your tests. So uh, there it's like a big trade-off. And also it's not as useful when you are using server side HTML rendering. Uh, so which strategy should to use? Well, you should be using both actually. Cypress recommends that you do sort of mix and match. You definitely don't want to run all your tests against a real server. A typical way would be to uh, run end-to-end uh, -end tests against a real server when you are testing critical parts of your application, sort of sunny day scenario, how everything works together. But when you are using, uh, when you are testing edge cases um, uh, or some complicated scenarios or some less relevant things, just um, stub your responses and, um, and take advantage of the speed and simplicity. <clears throat> uh, uh, how do we do intercepting and stubbing uh, of requests? Um, well, uh, First of all, intercepting, what is it? It's a kind of spying, it's looking into the request, looking live what is happening when I execute this command. Uh, so the first uh, part here uh, shows you uh, how to do it. You, you define the, the method uh, URL, maybe the host uh, the, uh, of the method that comes later. This you do in the setup, in the preparation for your tests. So uh, you uh, basically, uh, first you specify which methods will be intercepted and then you, uh, you run your requests. The intercepted method can be then stopped, meaning the response is re re um, replaced by a completely different one that has been prepared for you. So no, uh, no request is actually hitting your server. Uh, this way you can also, um, modify the request on the fly, or maybe check some things while the request is being executed. And uh, I will just uh, quickly go to show you um, one. So this is the, um, um, this is basically uh, the test where I'm using this intercept method. The reason for it is as I showed you before, my application, I have this weather forecast. It returns random data. So I don't, if I want to do um, some particular checks, uh, maybe I want to have um, fixed data to work with. So uh, that's why you might want to intercept a method. You just specify the type of uh, the, the HD, uh, the REST method that you are using, the, uh, uh, the, a, the API um, route that you, you will be taking, and then 
you specify the, this, the response that you want to be getting. This can also be, when it's a longer call like here, you can also have it in a separate file um, inside the fixtures folder in the Cypress, um, in the Cypress folder. Um, and when you, um, so maybe I'll just uh, go again from here. Um, so here I, because I know what, what data I'm expecting, I can do assertion of, um, on the text, for example. Um, I can also, the other use case would be, uh, for example, I am making the, I want to make the real request, but I just want to check afterwards, um, maybe the body length, maybe the, the body itself. Uh, this way I can run the request on the, uh, while, while the request is running. I'm not doing anything here, but you can also look into the request in this part. And then when I continue, I can look into the response. Um, that will be what you remember from this talk, the disappearing screens. Um, yeah. So here it's, um, here it's initializing configuration. And this is the spec. And finishing running and um, yeah, so here, uh, so first of all, Cypress lets us know that something happened to the request here. The full uh, circle just means that the request has been executed and the, uh, here it also lets us know that it has been modified. Uh, in the test where I completely replaced the request, uh, the circle is empty, so I know that actually no request hit the server. So uh, you know just by looking at it what happened, which is also quite uh, quite useful. Um, now that we looked into very simple testing scenarios, I want to sh show you how to integrate um, Cypress in your Azure pipeline using Docker. I'm, I'm not going to show you more test cases because I think this is too specific and also this part is very well documented in Cypress itself. For, for myself, when I started working with it, just in looking into documentation is actually enough to just write tests. And it's so many use cases, the, uh, the looking into particular ones is maybe counterproductive. However, what is difficult is to make use of those tests by integrating them in the pipeline. So uh, this is what I would like to focus on. So first of all, to run your test in a continuous integration pipeline, the application needs to be running. It's an end-to-end -end test, so you need a running uh, completely set up environment uh, with your application running. The simplest way to have, a, to have it running, or in theory the simplest way, is to run it inside the pipeline. If you have just front-end, that might be the way to go, because then you just start it inside the pipeline using your npm command and it's running. However, it is not the ideal way. First of all, typically your application will be more complex. Maybe you would have some database, some backend, maybe some uh, environment variables, maybe some other configuration that you need. It's not really good to rely on what is available in your integ uh, continuous integration server. It's also not portable because every time you change your integration server, you would have to start over. So I would say that this is not a real world application. Another way would be, that would be probably easy to set up is um, 
to deploy it on your on an external test server. So just whatever you have in your dev environment, you put it on some other environment, which you deploy per testing, which means that you cannot actually integrate it in your build pipeline, but it might be an option if you don't need instant feedback. So if you would run your uh, tests on nightly, why not? The disadvantage is that it does require a separate environment that comes with a cost money-wise. And uh, yeah, so, and it does complicate the workflow a bit. So that's also not ideal, but also if you, if your skill set doesn't include, for example, Docker, maybe as a first approximation, it's also a way to go. Uh, the third option is to use a Docker container. This is the option that I would like to demonstrate you. Uh, it has some very important pros. One of them is that you can use a same, the same or a similar configuration as, as you would, would use in production. So me, myself, I start with the same configuration, meaning having an Angular build for production. But actually, as I found out only later, that didn't require, that didn't allow me to uh, configure code coverage in a reasonable way. So I will come to this later, but this is maybe not the best option. However, the configuration can be similar, meaning you can prepare your environment to be, to have all the dependencies installed as you need them, all the libraries, all the environment vari variables there. So th that's a big advantage. And also, it runs in an isolated uh, environment. So uh, you don't have any impact from what is in your integration server or on your local machine. And it's portable. So once you configure your Docker container, if you have a continuous integration server that allows you to run Docker commands and Docker compose commands, which probably is all of them or most of them, that makes it very easy to move it if you need it or if you want to. And uh, the big con naturally is that it requires more time and you need to be at least a bit familiar with Docker because Docker is a standalone tool by itself that's not necessarily you have to know that well when you are just when you just want to run your tests. But now I will brief, briefly try to make you more familiar with how you can do it. Um, so since it's an Angular meetup, don't know if all of you have worked with Docker. Um, for those of you who, who haven't, Docker, uh, you're still probably familiar with what it is, but it is a, a software application um, platform that allows you to run containers on. The way it works, you create configuration files, sort of Docker, uh, you create Docker images that uh, you configure with a so-called so Docker file where you specify all the steps that are needed to build the environment for your virtual, virtual machine or of your container. So th those images are layered, which means you do not have to build every time from just their operation system. You can reuse configuration from, for example, official builds. Cypress has an official build, for example, the uh, official uh, image that you can start as a basis. So you would have all the Cypress in dependencies already installed. Another um, term from the Docker domain is Docker Compose file which is a YAML file that contains a, a recipe uh, for your containers to work together. Um, so this is the, what you need to know now. Uh, I won't show you my, I, for me, I'm running, a, I'm, I put my backend on a separate uh, Docker container and my frontend is actually on the same container as the Cypress, um, as the Cypress, um, <laughs> as the Cypress uh, test will be running in. Uh, as you can see, or you cannot see because the font is small. Um, so the, this uh, Docker file is a very simple file. What I need to do is just have my basic image, which I'm using 
Cypress image, which is important because you want to have all the tools for Cypress installed. Then I just need to make sure all my application code is there, Packet JSON is there, I run npm install so that all the dependencies are there. Then before, uh, as one of the last commands, I do verification of uh, Cypress installation, which is just npx Cypress verify. And the last step is to actually execute test. The command that I'm using, it's a, it's a custom uh, packet JSON script that both starts the um, Angular application and, and runs uh, Cypress tests against that application one, once it's started. It, uh, it does, uh, the, the reason why I have this custom command is also because of code coverage that I will show later. Uh, to do co you cannot you, uh, do code coverage out of the box, so you, you do need to do some configuration which doesn't allow you um, to run code coverage if you're just doing ng-serve, but this we'll come back to. So that's my Docker file. This is enough to, to build my container for, um, for front end. And here's, uh, again, a bigger front. It's my Docker Compose file for the pipeline. And it's also not too uh, complicated. So it's, I define services, which is my containers. So I have my backend container, which doesn't have any external configuration. I have my, um, my front end container. The reason why the build command is different is because I, ha I have a separate Docker file for running my application in production or in, yeah, or in staging, but, uh, and a separate Docker file for uh, continuous integration, the reason being code coverage. Um, that needs this um, application running in a development mode. Then I have uh, environment variables in my case just for the uh, authentication, but uh, that's because I have login. Uh, here you might put also other environment variables that you need that might be different locally and in, um, on your integration server. And the important part for um, for continuous integration is mounting of the volumes that you want to be using after the test. Mounting of volume is just plugging in separate, um, plugging in directories from the host that will be shared between the container and the host machine. So Cypress will be running into uh, screenshots and videos directories. I want to have access to those in my continuous integration. I also will need to need access to coverage and test results for the reporting, which is why I'm mounting all those volumes. That's pretty much the whole configuration from the Docker side. Um, now, I won't build it live or run it because it's just too long, but I will show you um, the pipeline. So. So first I will show you the steps that it has as they are in Azure. Uh, we do pretty much, I, I need to do the Docker Compose build, which is just every step of those Docker files executed. Then when I do Docker Compose up, what it does, it starts, the, starts my backend, starts backend, starts uh, this modified ng-serve command that runs the um, runs Angular application. And then once it's compiled, it runs Cypress tests. Here's also already cover, code coverage information. And once it's finished, it exits. After, um, after that is done, we just need to publish uh, all our artifacts and publish test results, publish the code coverage. And uh, this comes uh, here. And um, also, um, I will show you now how does it look 
from the inside. So um, in Azure, you can configure your pipeline with a YAML file, or you can also uh, add tasks to this YAML file uh, with the helpful predefined tasks that you have here. So uh, what interests us is, first of all, the Docker part. So you need to run the build, which is just you specify uh, the file that you are using and the command. So here, if you start just typing Docker, uh, Docker, you will get the Docker Compose. And here, you see that the mandatory fields are the, just the container registry and the, <clears throat> the file being used and just the command to run. So that's, um, that's that. The, um, the uh, Docker Compose app command, in my case, I'm passing uh, those environment variables that you can define uh, here as, in my case, secret, because those are for authentication. But generally, all the variables you can define in, uh, inside Azure. Uh, I also specify the file and import the command is docker compose app and the important part is arguments if you want this command to end once the test containers are exiting you need to abort on container exit otherwise this, this uh, step will hang so that's very important part and also exit code from in my case web app so the, the exit code that will be the result of this command will be the result of the tests. Then uh, there is publishing of the artifacts. Um, so the screenshots are in this directory. I just put them there. And it's only on the condition it, when it failed. But the videos, since they are always created, I also publish them when the pipeline succeeds. Um, the next part is code coverage uh, and the, the testing test report. Cypress ha comes with a built-in uh, mocha report that you can configure in your uh, um, types, uh, in, in your Cypress uh, configuration file. Um, and then, then you would get um, the report as a file almost out of the box. And then there's code coverage that I will come back to. And that's pretty much this when it comes to, um, to, um, to what we can see here. I think I, I, I wanted to show you just the artifacts. So here are the videos that you can download. And if something goes wrong, you have those screenshots, you have videos. So it's very easy to see also what happened on your integration server, you don't need to be trying to replicate it locally as much at least because you, you, ha you have visual input of what happened. So then um, coming back to the presentation, I will go to the code coverage part, which is a quite a long topic to, to talk about configuration, so I won't go into very much detail. But first of all, why do we care about code coverage? Obviously, it's not enough to know if your tests are passing. You also know, want to know how much are you testing. Is it enough? Which parts of the code are tested? And code coverage gives you precisely this metric. Afterwards, you can examine it where the tests are still missing. Do you need to write more? The next logical step would be to have combined code coverage from unit and end-to-end -end tests, which I didn't know do. I found some examples on the web, which I included in the resources, but I didn't have uh, any more time to do it. So I just did code coverage for um, for end-to-end uh, -end tests. And uh, what do you actually need to do to have code coverage? Well, as a prerequisite, you need to instrument your code. What is instrumenting the code? Well, it is kind of wrapping up the code into additional code that will provide a tool to then uh, calculate uh, the necessary uh, metrics. So calculate how many lines of code, how many methods have been covered, which is why if you run your application in production build, you don't have any more access to 
for example, separate components, you would see, yes, I have those transpile JavaScript files, but it doesn't tell me much when I have only four files as an output of my build. So that's why you need your development build. And for me, I started with the, without code coverage in mind, which, is, which added a lot of work on top. And one thing that I noticed and I struggled with when I was preparing this demo was that on Cypress they use a React app, which has sort of different way to get the instrumentation done. And for me, that was the harder part. So then the, the Cypress part is easy to do, but then you have to already know how to instrument your code, which, as I said, it's more complicated. I had to look through some examples. I also included the, the resource later, what I used. And as I said, I won't show it exactly. I just want to go through those steps so that maybe some light will uh, li be lit in your head when you want to do it yourself. First step, so to instrument your code, you don't really do it yourself from scratch. There are tools, there are libraries. You use Istanbul.js library, for example, it's this NYC library. Um, so you, you installed some dependencies. Uh, you, have, you need custom webpack to be able to take advantage of those uh, transpiled uh, uh, to, to those instrumented files. Then you need uh, additional libraries to work with TypeScript. After this is done, you need a configuration file for your Istanbul plugin. In this file, you will specify what files are excluded, for example, and what reporters will be used for your code coverage. Uh, you need this custom uh, coverage webpack file that will be used to run ng self command for your tests. You need to modify Angular JSON file to take advantage of this custom webpack file. And then the last step, you add a script to package JSON to be able to run the script easily from, from as an NPM command. So the instrumentation part, as I said, that's the hard part. Uh, adding the code coverage, it's quite simple uh, and uh, the, the, it's very well documented on Cypress website. You need to uh, um, install a Cypress uh, code coverage library and then you need to modify two configuration files, but that's pretty much it from the Cypress side. This allows you to run test, co test coverage. And um, yeah, um, and when you are when you are integrating uh, this code coverage in Azure DevOps, uh, what you also need to do is uh, to add the specific uh, reporter because uh, Azure, Azure DevOps works with Jacoco and Cobertura format, which means those would be the reporters you add to your configuration and you need to mount those folders to Docker Compose file. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to code coverage. It's, uh, as I said, for me, it's quite important to have it configured uh, because just having some tests, it's maybe not enough information. And uh, that's it from, uh, from what I have uh, prepared. Some short summary, what I have learned doing this. Even though I started with, with a mindset, I want to prepare a setup that we can reuse in 2-bit over and over again. I did find out that some parts, yes, we can reuse, and yes, you gain experience from doing it over and over again, but not everything will be always the same. So you need to always think about, from the beginning, about the frameworks you are using, amount of configuration needed, maybe login method is a, an obstacle to come through. Maybe you don't have skills for everything. Maybe you don't have time. So you always need to think about your particular setup. There's no one fits all kind of setup. And uh, each approach would have its trade-offs. Trade I started with saying, yes, you can use your production configuration, but yeah, maybe not for code coverage then. So you always, maybe the easiest way is to stop all your requests 
maybe this is even like a first approximation. Yes, we don't want to run our backend at all. You, you always need to see what's best for you. And third, I think very important lesson is that, okay, uh, writing test, maybe it's not easy, but it's the, definitely the easiest part because it's just another piece of code that you write. Setting it up takes time. This takes experience in different domains that are not necessarily overlapping. So this is what takes time. This is what takes experience, and this is what you might struggle with. And th th this is also important to stress because if you, for example, you write 100 integrate 100 end-to-end -end tests, they run with you, you in your local machine, and then what? You cannot integrate it, so they are completely useless. A test running locally is like no test at all. So it's better to have some use cases cover very, have covered very simple ones and then build on that in the future rather than start with just writing tests and think later what you will do with them. And my personal takeaway is that it's worth taking breaks and work in small chunks. I, I am a mother of a one and a half year old daughter, so I could only, if I wanted to do something outside of work hours, it was either in the evening or when she was taking naps. So I often ended up frustrated that I didn't finish because I felt like I need to finish it. But actually what I found out is that sometimes you struggle with something for two hours, you have no idea how to do it. The next day you come back, you do it in five minutes. So especially with configuration, maybe it's sometimes worth to refresh your mind and just not think about it for a while and it will come to you. So that's it. And uh, this is a list of resources. I don't expect you to write them down or remember, but th this is what I used. And uh, if you want to look through my configuration, my demo, this is the link to GitHub repository where I put it and it will be, uh, it also contains this presentation. So if there's anything useful, you found useful there, you can also take a look afterwards. And uh, that's it for me today. It's a bit over time, but not too much. And uh, thank you for listening to me today. Let, let me just finish by saying, but we, in 2 bit we try to organize meetups um, regularly uh, on, with focus on web development. So you can see on our LinkedIn or on our meetup page as well, that what we are currently doing now that Corona is a bit paused, maybe there will be more live events. So I hope you can, uh, you will keep in touch and it's not the last time you hear from us. So thank you, that's all.